At this point, we are going to remove the valve plate. The two Allen screws at approximately 9 and 3 o'clock are removed. The valve plate is now loose from the pump. However, when removing the valve plate, be careful. There could be a slight adhesion of the diaphragms to the back of the valve plate. Pulling too hard may ruin one or more of the diaphragms. The possibility exists they might be bad anyway, but it's a good idea to be cautiously aggressive. The valve plate may need to be placed into a tub of solvent or parts cleaner prior to valve removal. Remember, when removing the valve retainer, do not apply too much pressure. These are plastic and could be broken. Behind the valve spring retainer is the valve spring, the valve, and the tetra seal. Remove the other two exterior valves. Next, remove the three interior valves. To remove the interior valves, something small and thin is needed. A very small flathead screwdriver or a small Allen wrench, as shown here, will work. Place the Allen wrench down between the plastic, not against the plastic. When in position, tap it lightly with a hammer. The external and internal components are identical. There is, however, an additional piece in the internal valve. It is called the valve seat. Remove the valve seat, the valve, the valve spring, the tetra seal, and the valve spring retainer. Now remove the two other interior valves. At this point, it is a good idea to put something under the pump to catch the oil in the pump. The pump contains approximately one quart of oil. When pulling a diaphragm away from the pump, oil leakage is likely to occur. There are three diaphragms that cause the pump to move fluid. Visually inspect each diaphragm to see if any or all need to be replaced. There may have been disfiguration of the diaphragm due to increased pressure or impurities in the material that came through and damaged the diaphragm. Typically, if there is a damaged diaphragm, it is because during pump operation, oil is leaking out. If there is a break or cut in a diaphragm, replace it. Visually inspecting the oil reservoir is the only way to know if oil has been leaking. Remove the cap and visually check the oil level. If the goal is to remove a diaphragm without damaging it, use a Phillips head screwdriver and a small straight tool such as a small Allen wrench. Gently pull the diaphragm away from the pump and a small hole on the shaft becomes visible. Place the Allen wrench or a small tool into the hole and hold the shaft in place while unscrewing the Phillips screw located in the center of the diaphragm. If the diaphragms are bad and are being thrown away, grab the diaphragm with a pair of pliers and pull them away from the pump. In order to replace the diaphragm, the follower that holds it in place needs to be removed. This completes the removal of the manifold and valve plate from the pump housing. Annotation. There are two bolts on the hydraulic side, the opposite end of the fluid end of the pump, that will not be removed at any point during this process. If the diaphragms are not being replaced, be sure to carefully inspect each of the diaphragms for any damage. Also, when installing the diaphragm into the pump housing, be sure that the raised side of the diaphragm is turned away from the pump. When replacing a diaphragm in the pump housing, use a small tool such as an Allen wrench. Place the tool into the hole on the shaft to prevent the shaft from turning while using a Phillips screwdriver to connect the diaphragm to the pump housing. Be sure to place the follower in front of the diaphragm. 